Hey everyone, my name is Peyton and in this video I'd like to cover how to set up a glass shader using thin translucency. Uh, and for this example I wanted to show uh, kind of the end result that we will be getting. Uh, these are the three different shapes that I want to be using. So I'm just, I got a sphere and then two different vases. Uh, but you can see that I have some uh, color changes that I can do with the glass. And then of course it has refraction and uh, kind of the roughness and everything as well. Uh, so I wanted to go through the process of setting that up. Um, and we're going to start over here with these three shapes. Uh, and right now I just have an opaque shader on them. So I'm gonna go down to my materials folder and right click and of course uh, add a new material. And this one is going to be called, let me go ahead and rename it to glass uh, translucent, uh, let's just say A. And so that should be there, cool. Um, and I'm going to open it up in my editor here. A um, couple things to note for my uh, project itself. I'm in Unreal Engine 5.1 and I have ray tracing turned on. Um, so that'll, yeah, potentially change some of the, the looks and effects and everything uh, that we see in here. Um, but I'm just going to start with a simple color, of course. Um, so I just press the three uh, constant. Um, three on my keyboard and get that and I'm going to throw down a color real quick uh, so we have something simple on the uh, the shapes hit apply and then I'm going to apply these of course to my um, different shapes here so that way when we go to uh, actually editing it and all um, we're going to be able to see it pretty quickly so uh, now we are back in the material uh, what I want to do first is actually set up the material to be um, able to read properly the translucency and everything. Um, so I'm gonna click here, of course, and actually go into our material properties. Uh, and I'm gonna change uh, the blend mode first from opaque over to translucent. And then the shading model, uh, I'm also going to change for this. And I'm gonna switch that over to thin translucent. Um, now we're gonna get some errors down here, basically um, for two different things. It's going to tell us that we need to change our, um, our lighting method and then also uh, that we need an output node for that as well. So first thing I'm going to do is scroll down here and find the translucency area. And we can see that the lighting mode is here and I can drop this down and I'm going to switch it over to forward shading. Um, if you're not aware, it can also just tell you here if you're having like an, an error you know, um, basically what it needs to be for specific things to set up. So I'm going to switch it over to surface um, forward shading. And now we see that we're getting a couple of our uh, outputs like back in our material, which is pretty nice. And then the other thing is, it's going to be asking for a thin translucent material output node. And I can actually right click and just type in um, that. And you'll see that we'll literally get this thin then translucent material output node. Um, and I can go ahead and you can actually put a color in here. So I'm just gonna duplicate this color over um, and it'll probably be a different color than our, our main one or so, but it doesn't really matter at the moment. I just need something in there um, to read it. And then one other problem that we're gonna be having is we don't have any values going into our opacity or anything. Um, so you'll probably notice that, uh, yeah, it's going to look pretty weird at the moment, um, but that should be fine. So first things I'm going to do is I also want to make sure that we have all of this kind of set up so we can do some uh, instances pretty easily. So it's basically going to be like a master material for glass. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and convert this over to a parameter, and I'm just going to name this the simple base color. Uh, there we go. And then I'm going to convert this one to parameter as well. And I can probably uh, name it transmitted color. Pretty much just what lines up with that. That way we can keep track of all the different um, outputs that we have when we get to our main shader. Uh, metallic, I'll set up for something like that. Uh, and I am going to actually make, I'm 
pressing one on my keyboard to make these uh, one constants. Um, and I'm plugging one into each of these. I will probably do more with the roughness, um, but for now, uh, specular definitely won't. Specular, and then I'm just converting yeah, all of these. That way we have them. Uh, it's better to have them available uh, than anything. Um, roughness, like I said, we're about to do something more with that. And then let's also do uh, opacity. So this one's going to be called opacity. And the nice thing is like, you know, if we're using glass all throughout our environment, um, you only have to really do this once and technically you can even take it to another project. So you don't have to do it every single time. Uh, you could just, uh, actually migrate it to each project and kind of have like this, you know, master material, uh, library that you, uh, carry over from project to project and um, use and that can be you know, pretty nice um, that way it's everything's already templated out uh, for you so with my opacity I'm going to just set it to um, I guess a default of like 0.1 might be nice uh, that way we have something in there and it's not just at a zero specular might default at a 0.5 that way we're just getting like a very generic glass in there um, for that and then I am going to also put a value into our refraction. That way it kind of distorts. And you can see here already, um, you know, when we get that refraction in there, uh, temporarily it was showing up some uh, distortion, but gonna do refraction, cool. And this one by default, let's say, I'm gonna do a 1.2, uh, 1.25. That way it's not too much. Um, one would be like zero pretty much uh, with the refraction so you wouldn't get any distortion. Um, so I'm doing slightly a uh, bit of distortion with that. And then the color. So we have those set up. Uh, now I want to have basically my UVs on my models aren't really like kind of done or anything like that. So right now, uh, and another nice thing we could do is basically with our roughness, uh, I might want to put a grunge in there. That way it's not just like a kind of a flat value and we're getting some breakup, uh, kind of like you saw uh, over here real quick. I'll make sure to hit apply on that. And you can see the breakup that we're getting with the, the lighting response um, there. And I think that's pretty nice. So... Uh, getting that in just even as a base, we can, you know, uh, replace it later. But so far, this is what we have. Uh, and you can see that, yeah, we're starting to get some of the uh, the look that we're trying to get with the, um, the glass. But uh, we won't eventually have, you know, the, the main mass of material apply to this. It'll probably be an instance. Uh, but I'm going to jump back over here. And now let me set up that roughness. Um, what I want to do is I think I have a, I'll use the same one that I used for the other glass. I'm going to go to my grunge and I just have this like wood grunge. Um, I don't remember what I was actually using it for, but I think it has like a decent amount of breakup for it. Uh, so I'm going to drag this in here and right now it's a texture sample. I actually want it to be a texture object because I want to use it uh, with the world aligned texture. Um, so I'm going to drag out of the texture object now that I've converted it and do world aligned. And I'm just going to do a world aligned texture. So there we go. And I'm going to plug in the XYZ um, to a lerp. So uh, if you press L on your keyboard, you can also right click and type in uh, linear interpolate um, but basically the yeah or L uh, this is basically a blend um, between two different values and it's interpolating between um, so I'm going to use the X Y and Z texture uh, for the alpha of that and then I'm going to do um, two one constants going into the uh, A and B of that so there we go and then I can plug this into the roughness. So with this, I believe um, this should be going to convert both of these to parameters. And this should be roughness, I think. Um, min. I might have that right. And then this should be 
roughness max. So it's uh, it's going to basically do like in between these two values. Um, so meta max, let's do kind of a default point three for that, and then a point five for that one. And there we go. And if we look over here, we should start to see some break up there, which is not too bad. Okay, I'm probably going to drop this down to 0.1 and then a point, uh, 0.3, let's say, for the default value there. And that's starting to look all right. And then, okay, so we have uh, this texture object. Um, I also want to convert this to a parameter. Uh, that way we can bring in different um, grunges pretty much for the glass. So I'm going to just name it glass grunge. There we go. Hit apply. And there we go. So, um, just wanted to look through here real quick as well. Make sure I didn't forget anything in the moment. Um, and I'm gonna be done with that for now. So now I'm gonna go in here, and we can see that yeah, we're already starting to get um, some nice response from that. But I want to actually control it a little bit more to where we can uh, yeah start to see similar to what we're seeing over there. Uh, so now that I have my glass translucent that I've pretty much set up, I can right click this and create a material instance. Um, and let's say I named this one glass uh, blue A. So now I can apply to all of these. I'm going to display these two materials and then yeah, just make sure glass blue A is our material for these. Um, and now I can actually double click on this and we get all these really nice controls to where we can really quickly see the updates live and pretty much edit it that way. Um, so for this first one, I'm going to actually like expose everything uh, just so you can see the, the range with it. Um, so with our, there we go. With our opacity, you know, we can control the um, opacity of the material. So 0.1, I'm kind of leaving it at that. This is the refraction. So let me go down here real quick and change the transmittance color to a more clear tone. I think this light is also that was a little strong. Um, but yeah, so now I have like the, you can see this is a pretty high impact with the actual um, glass shaders color. Um, so even if you, you know, you wanted like a, a light blue or so, um, you'd probably want to tone it back a, a bit, but you can really quickly get a ton of variation uh, out of this, um, kind of using this process, but I'm going to go for something lighter at the moment. Um, then the main base color. Uh, of course, like, can also tone down to be a bit darker. Um, that way we don't get that, like, kind of foggy glow. Um, so, something down there. And now if I, yeah, went back to that transmittance color and played it around, you can see that it's kind of a darker tone now um, with how they're kind of uh, working together. And... Let's say that we we end up on like a, a lighter blue around there. And um, yeah, it would definitely take some tweaking and, you know, looking at uh, what type of material that we're actually going for. Um, now the refraction, as you can see, um, is starting to do some of it. And you could even add uh, some other controls to it. But I, I think like a one point to five in that range, uh, especially when you start to get like the the shape of like a vase, 
uh, you can see how it's like really decently distorting that that back portion um, behind the the glass and it gives you that yeah that really just nice effect that you get when you're looking through glass um, and then with our roughness minimax you can see here that uh, we can pretty much like control the uh, values here as well where um, you know determining on how rough we want it to be I think another thing we could probably add is like a, a tiling amount for the glass grunge um, that way I can make it bigger and smaller but since it's world aligned you can see when I move this vase the grunge is kind of randomized on it because it's staying to the world coordinates um, so it's also another nice way to get some uh, like grunge variation where it's not repeating across uh, you know everywhere on the same glass um, but if you were to actually have you know your UV set up and everything and you wanted to have like a grunge uh, I guess basically like a mask that you bring in um, you know from painter somewhere where you want to bake in some some dirt detail around areas uh, then that could be really great way to do that where you basically bring it in plug it in um, without the world aligned texture and then you could control that um, and i could go further as well where if i went back into the material also i could actually control the uh, values where you know i could use this to uh, do a blend between base colors if i wanted my grunge to be slightly different uh, color um, I could also do it where it kind of uh, messes with the refraction a bit, um, you know, where we have different refraction values based off of this grunge. Uh, and basically with that, you would just use the LERP the same way. But instead of having the roughness min and max here, you would have two refraction um, variations or two base color variations and so forth. And that's pretty much how you would go about uh, setting it up that way. Um, but yeah, with what we've set up here, what you can see is we can really quickly get a lot of variation out of glass, um, have a nice kit where, you know, this is working pretty well with lighting and everything. We're getting slight distortion and um, it feels pretty much like what you would imagine for some glass um, in a relatively quick amount of time. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.